This is part four of a six-part parenting series. In this video, I will be addressing the authoritarian parent. Before continuing, I want to let all of you know that I dearly appreciate your willingness to actively learn about these parenting styles and staying in this series strong. Authoritarian parenting will be the last of what's considered least effective before moving into the one considered most effective to raising our children. So keep on striving. My main goal of this content is to serve as a support so that parents who use this parenting style can emotionally heal from the psychological effects of their youth and as a guide so that our children will not have to repeat the same strained generational cycle as our parents so that these kids can grow to develop with healthy parent-child dynamics. With that heads up, let's be educated. According to a Parenting Science article, it quotes from clinical psychologist Diana Baumrind, who is known for her research on parenting styles and child development. The authoritarian parenting style is about being strict and stern. It insists on unquestioning obedience and enforces good behavior through psychological control, threats, shaming, and other punishments. As defined by psychologists, it's also a style associated with relatively little parental warmth and responsiveness. A Very Well Mind article also gives us further characteristics of these parents. Authoritarian parents don't give children choices or options. Parents set the rules and have a my way or the highway approach to discipline. There is little room for negotiation and they rarely allow their children to make their own choices. Rather than relying on positive reinforcement, they react swiftly and harshly when the rules are broken. From what we have just covered, you can start to get a feel for the situation at hand. Due to the excessive standards and expectations placed on these kids, it's no surprise that they may relate to feeling high levels of stress and anxiety. Children aren't the only ones affected though, as overbearing caregivers may feel stressed, overwhelmed, and frustrated themselves. They feel as there no choice but to rule with an iron fist in order to keep the household together. Likewise, this parent may have been raised under a similar authoritarian upbringing or contain specific personality traits that gravitate towards hostility, apathy, feelings of doubt, and depression, as this may be all they ever know to raising children. Unfortunately, these parents aren't able to be the strong enough figures in their children's lives with the time and energy to understand their needs on a deeper level. This is the reason why they may come across as harsh, cold, and even brutal because of the lack of resources and support provided to help these parents raise their children with patience and understanding. Let's determine this style's effectiveness by weighing in the pros and cons. We'll start with the cons. Our first con is that these children are unable to learn important self-discipline skills in adulthood. Since children are not encouraged to be independent thinkers or problem solvers because of the fact that their parents hover over and micromanage nearly all aspects of their children's lives and behaviors, which deprives them of the opportunity to being taught major life lessons through their individual choices. Kids may not be able to learn how to set and maintain their own personal standards once the authoritarian parent is gone, and where these parents may not be able to regulate the same amount of control they have on these children once they turn into independent adults. This brings us to our next repercussion, in which children may experience worse behavioral outcomes over time and suffer from social anxiety. With behavior, children may be provoked to rebel against authoritarian responses as caregivers fail to discover why their children may act in this way. Sadly, these parents aren't able to find quick-witted solutions for open communication and discussion, which this transfers over socially, where the child may continue to carry the parent's hostility and self-doubt to others in the real-world environment. They then after may suddenly feel so many surging feelings of shame and guilt from the way they were raised that this just happens to result in their lower self-esteem and confidence. This leads to our next con in which these kids may be easily manipulated or taken advantage of. 
since authoritarian parents always exercise high levels of authority without question and harsh punishments for breaking the rules, children submit to them in petrified obedience, not because they had a clear understanding that following the rules were the right thing to do, but because of the fear of rejection and harsh criticism. This teaches children two things. One, that they should obey any type of authority, despite the child needing the ability to differentiate between good and bad sources that try to assert control over them. And two, that other people should overstep on their boundaries and keep quiet even if being hurt. Areas in relationships and other settings where these children are now at the age to start making their own decisions and choices as adults is where many wish they had learned more leadership and morals from their parents when they were younger. This is perfectly summed up in our final con, in which these children are more likely to tune out their caregiver's advice as they get older, or even reject them entirely as people. According to a study done by American undergraduates, researchers asked students who they consulted with when they had to make major moral decisions. Undergraduates with authoritative parents or the ones who enforced limits but showed high warmth and affection were the most likely to say that they would consult with their parents. Students with authoritarian parents, however, or the ones who enforced limits but showed little warmth or affection said that they were more likely to reference their peers. Even though this style may not be considered the most effective, you can say that at least these parents place rules and expectations on their children, which sets them apart from permissive and uninvolved parents. You can also say that this style may be different for everyone in different cultures. Psychologist Ruth Chow argues that the Chinese version of authoritarian parenting is essentially different. She says that unlike Western authoritarian parents, Chinese authoritarian parents have closer relationships to their kids and that therefore closeness is a predictor of higher school achievement and self-motivation. Even though articles of research gives tips for these parents saying that they should listen to their kids more and use logical consequences for breaking rules, which can be done of course, but I believe that it may be quite unrealistic for some of these parents to do this because of the lack of support and tools needed to help grace their parenting more easier. It's no surprise that they end up harsh because of the stresses they encounter in everyday life and the challenge to being patient with their children if they are always having to tackle personal affairs like work and health. This is where I propose that we as parents both married and becoming married, living together and single, unite together to help provide the best resources we can for these families in the form of parenting groups. Parenting is a role that requires ever so much patience, wisdom, understanding, communication, and consistency of the child's needs. So having a support system to guide us through our troubles can greatly help to take away a lot of the psychological pain and stress we've experienced while growing up. It can also help to strengthen even our own relationships that we have with our own kids and help protect against the negative perception that people tend to play off this style. A Choosing Therapy article agrees with my point. Individual, group, and family therapy are all options for addressing parenting issues. Parenting groups can be helpful for learning new skills, sharing your experiences, and getting feedback from other parents who may struggle with similar challenges. Family therapy provides a therapist to help you work on changing unhealthy communication and behaviors. This ends part four. In the next video, we will talk about the authoritative parent. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can know when this video will be made available. Thank you for viewing. See you in the next video.